Okay, in this video, we are going to show the use of the carbon garment processor to stitch these gene panels. First, let's add a carbon garment processor node by clicking once on the icon on the shelf. Double clicking on the icon will bring up the garment processor documentation. Next, we select the SIM panels, then the RENA panels, and finally the details. By default, the simulation panels are also used as reference panels. However, because our render panels are flat, we need to set the deformer reference to the flat deformer reference panels we loaded. Okay, let's move on to stage two. Do we want to delete history? Absolutely, or it will interfere with our no graph evaluation later. So this is stage two. It lets you rearrange the automatically generated relationship between render panel and details. However, in this scene, as we are using flat render panels, it's hard for this relationship to go wrong. And because there are some side effects from using this stage, such as the color we need to do this relationship check bloats the file size massively, it's not worth us even checking this. We can always fix it later if need be. Moving on to stage three. Some packages like Optitex vStitcher have each stitch as a separate piece of geometry. This stage lets you merge together all the details associated with a single panel to avoid having thousands of additional nodes. As here we are working on a Marvelous garment and Marvelous puts out a single mesh per detail, we can just move straight to stage four. Stage four creates a carbon simulation and stitches the panels. Right, that's our genes stitched. You can see here a couple of places that didn't stitch with the default settings. We can increase our search radius to 0.3 of a scene unit. No, that still didn't catch them. I don't really want to go higher as we'll start creating other stitches we don't want. So we can come back and easily manually stitch these later. The rest is looking really good. So the next step is to apply the deformers. Right now, we have the carbon physics drawer displaying the cloth with thickness. And here are the stitches. And that's the actual simulation geometry. So what we're going to do is deform the render geometry we imported to this simulation geometry. This is completely independent of simulation. So we can do this now, we can do it later, we can swap the render meshes out for different meshes later without having to re-simulate. It takes a few minutes to apply the deformers depending on the number and size of meshes. That's done, so let's display the textures. There we go. Let's take a closer look at one of the deformers. We can see that we can import and export deformer mappings and also there are different deformers we can choose from. We'll cover those in another video. If you're using large render meshes, then it's useful to save out the mappings and have them also load when you load the scene. There is a script in the garment processor section of the carbon forum to assist with saving out all the meshes. Oh, here are some random details. I double checked and these were in this position in the marvelous file. Clearly the designer was planning to add a zipper pull and then decided not to, but forgot to remove it from the scene. It's important that once you've run the deformers, you don't manually delete any geometry. Either hide it or use a carbon script to delete it when it becomes available, but don't manually delete it. Otherwise the deformers will get out of sync. If you start getting deformer errors popping up all the time, most likely you have directly deleted some geometry. Okay, now let's move on to fixing the last few issues with the genes in the next video.